Hey y'all, welcome back to Harmon Homestead. Look at my cabbages here. They're making little heads, but we've got some damage to the leaves here. This is my biggest one. See the holes in the leaves? We have one of two things on these plants. We have cabbage worms or cabbage loopers. So let's talk about both of those. So I'm down here in the cabbages, guys, and the reason I said either we have cabbage worms or cabbage loopers, which are worms, caterpillars, is because I can't find anything on these plants. I've turned the leaves inside out, upside down, and all I see is a little damage, but I don't see any worms, I don't see any moths. When you're looking for damage to these plants, look for moths, because we all know moths turn into caterpillars, worms. So down here we say moths instead of moths, but I'm gonna try to say it correctly for you guys. So I can't find anything, but I know there's damage because it's increasing. So let's talk about it. My last video, I showed you radical gardening. There's all of my tomatoes back there. Everything online says never, ever, ever, ever plant tomatoes and cabbages, but I just did, I did. These cabbages are gonna be done in the next month and these tomatoes will only be, you know, a foot tall. So. That's why I went on and planted them, and because I can side dress in between, apparently they're heavy competitors for nutrients, I can side dress there. So, before I did this video, I said, let's, let me do some research to show you guys how to treat cabbage worms or cabbage loopers. Whatever it is, the treatment is generally the same, okay? I will say, we've been very blessed this year. I have no disease on these plants whatsoever, none none whatsoever i have told y'all that we have planted these same crops in the fall here in alabama you have to get them in the ground in august um guys it's usually still 100 degrees in august here it's humid the pests are terrible i've had cabbages before thanksgiving week that looked like my smallest one over here you can't even see it i mean just tiny 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 no good no good I'm telling you right now, try planting in early February. Next year, we, we may bump it up till mid-January to get this stuff in the ground because it's frost hardy if it's established and this big. It, it's just great. And the pests are null and void, pretty much, your, your bad pest this time of the year. Now, if I planted this again in August, it would have been terrible. It would have been eaten up to, to a nub. So let's talk about it. I'm gonna talk about how you can do this organically and non-organically. So let's start out with organic. So before I did this video, I've mentioned this book before that I got at a thrift store, The Organic Plant Protection. If you can find that, get it. It talks about everything from peach trees to BT to cabbage worms, okay? Everything you need is in here on how to plant organically. I think this is from the 60s, 70s, but it all still holds true. So let's turn right to cabbage and guys, when I did that video on tomatoes and cabbages, I just never knew what I was really doing. I just thought it would be worth a try, but listen up. I'm gonna read verbatim. I've highlighted things out of here for my own knowledge and for you guys, and I wanna read it to you. So, cabbage worms, very common, we all know this, or cabbage loopers. Again, they both look like worms on your plant. Caterpillars, worms, same thing, okay? As far as the damage it's gonna do to your plant, it's gonna eat the leaves until it can't take in chlorophyll through photosynthesis because there's no there's no plant structure. I'm gonna get on my knees here so I can talk to you guys. Ooh. So, cabbage worms and cabbage loopers are both very common. And it says that growers have found that pests are less partial to the red than green. I've not noticed any damage to my red acre cabbage in the back, in both beds here. But I have had more damage in this bed, this topsoil bed, than my pot no potting mix bed over here. That we've shown you how to make the DIY raised bed, easy. You get block, boards, mulch, paper, compost. It's an active compost bed. There's tons of earthworms in that bed. It's very good soil. And the better your soil is, the less pet pest pressure you're gonna have in general, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, red is better than green. But I will say, if you're new to cabbage, don't go out and plant just red cabbage because it doesn't do as well as green. It takes longer to grow. It uh, it's usually smaller from what I've seen. That's just me. Um, if you're a beginner gardener, get regular cabbage. Learn how to grow that and then start with red. And that's pretty much anything. If you watched my video the other day on radical gardening, I did four better boys. 
the red tomatoes. Then I've got all these black ones down here, black from Tula, black brandy wine. I've got black crims. I've got all sorts of off the wall tomatoes. Those usually don't do as well as a plain regular tomato. If you're new, get the basic, okay? Get the basics. So cabbage loopers. It says that the mall is usually a brown one. I have seen a few of those brown malls out here. Um, it, the cabbage looper grows an inch and a half long. It said it's, it's named up because it loops as it crawls. It's like an inch worm. That's what it looks like. Um, eggs are laid usually on the upper surface of the leaves. I've looked on top, I've looked on bottom. I can't find an egg anywhere at all. Um, now, treatment for this. Wasp are good. We've got wasp everywhere, okay? We've got wasp everywhere around this house. We've got a lot of wood structures on the property. They love to get make their nests there. It hasn't worked so far. Um, next, BT. BT is great for cabbage loopers or cabbage worms, and this is organic. So, this right here, you need. This is just a great all-around control. If this is concentrated, mix one tablespoon to a gallon. That's what you need to do to use BT on your plants. I never put any pesticide on my plant in the hot sun, ever, 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 ever. Because to me, in my mind, it can burn the leaves. I just don't, okay? I don't. The only time that I will put anything during the hot sun is for powdery mildew on squash and zucchini. Mix milk with a little water, spray it on the leaves. The old milk, if it's burnt, that's even better. Ruined. <laughs> spray it on the leaves, let it bake into it. It worked last year, okay? It worked. I didn't have one bit of powdery mildew. BT. BT is effective for both. Bacillus thuringiensis. We've done a video on this. Okay, so that's organic because it's naturally occurring in the soil. So that's acceptable. All right, cabbage worms. Yellow moths, you'll see those and then you'll see a worm. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. In the fall here in Alabama, we have little yellow moths everywhere. That's when my husband knows it's getting close to deer hunting season because he'll see those and he'll know that the weather's getting cooler. Those are prevalent in the fall here in Alabama. Again, better in the spring um it says the weather has a lot to do with how much trouble these caterpillars give you they can drown during heavy rains last night we had a downpour we did a youtube short on protecting your plants from hail i come out here with rubbermaid totes every huge gardening container i could find and covered up my plants um we had a tornado in this county actually thankfully we were blessed no hail the garden was fine however I don't know if the plastic totes would hold up to a large hail. I doubt it, but if it can dent a car, I'm sure it could go through a plastic tote. But if it was pea-sized hail, it might help. Um, and it did not bake the plants. I was more worried about that than anything right before sunset. I come out here, put the totes on in the in near dark, took them off this morning before the sun even broke the hillside. So you have to get the totes off before it starts um, getting hot on those plants. They'll suffocate. And I left a gap at the bottom Again, I've got everything healed up here. That was perfect. I could set the square tote down on it. It was tilted. It could get airflow up under there um, if it didn't have holes in the bottom. Um, so, what can you do for all of this? The, the rain's good, okay? So, if you overhead water, we've always been told to do drip air irrigation, but if you overhead water, that will help. You're spraying the pest off the plant or either natural rain. And guys, I know a lot of people get all upset about drip irrigation and thinking that that with tomato plants is, is the wonder and if you overhead water it's going to cause problems i think it can i really do but guess what rain comes from above so you know i i worried myself so much over all that i finally just said look i'm gonna water my garden with a hose i'm not gonna spend all the money on the drip irrigation now if you want to that's fine but we still do okay here so don't if you if you're struggling and you're a new gardener just get out here and water it with a hose or either let it rain from above it'll it'll be okay um so companion planting for both both pests cabbage loopers cab cabbage worms it says that you simp by simply surrounding the rows in plants such as tomatoes and sage look over here i had no idea when i did that video i had no clue that will repel the cabbage butterfly that causes the cabbage worm. Boom, that right there. So, now that they're getting bigger, these worms are wanting to get on these plants. I'm sorry, the camera's shaking, guys. It's very windy here today. Those tomatoes are gonna be right back there. I don't know how beneficial they're gonna be because they're small, but they still put off a smell. So if, they're, if the 
cabbage moths and worms go off smell, then hopefully that will repel it, especially when they get wet. You can smell a baby tomato plant. Um, tansy, planted around cabbages will repel, cut worms. It says plantings of rosemary, sage, nasturtiums, catnip, mint, southern wood, hemp, or hyssop will protect crucifers against white cabbage butterflies. That's fine and dandy, but I can't plant that in January or February here. It's not going to grow. It's not going to make it. This would be good if you're planting something in the fall. The problem is there again, when frost comes, you know, you're just in a mess. That would be more for people that are up north that can, the very first day they can plant, plant a cabbage, and it'll be okay until their first frost, and that's when they harvest it. Here in the south, we have to plant early spring, well, we're still winter, really, or late, late, late fall. I would go gear towards early spring. Um, but we just, our frost is gonna get all this stuff, this uh, rosemary and all, or his, uh, it, it's just gonna take it out. Uh, now listen to this. This one gardener prepares a fertile bed with a mixture of compost and manure worked in the ground. We've got that here and marks with small, small stakes the spots where he will eventually transplant his cabbages. Between each stake, he plants two garlic cloves about two inches apart. When the garlic has grown to a height of two inches, cabbages are transplanted and, and get immediate protection. Cabbages are protected by onions and garlic. Right over here beside the cabbages before I planted the tomatoes and on the outside of the tomatoes, I have Texas Grano onions. Onions repel a host of pests if you're organic gardening and companion planting. Onions, onions, onions. A lot of things don't like to be by onions though, so be careful with that. To me, personally, if you were going to plant onions, I would plant them around the border of my raised bed to repel the whole area, the smell, okay? Deer hate minced onion. They don't like that. Um, so, that may help. So, we've got two companions right here beside these cabbages. Onion, tomatoes, then your cabbage. Then I've got onion on the back side as a border. Um, I, I didn't have room on the back side over here to plant onions. I did them the best I could right here and then on the edge over here. So that's just interesting to notice. Um, all right, other methods. Cabbage butterfly detours the pest. This person sprinkles a little sour milk into the center of each cabbage, says that works. Um, skim milk that's turned rotten, uh, that's great. I would say buttermilk would be fine as well. Mixed with vinegar, they hate the smell there again. Um, and that's perfectly fine for any animal in your garden. It's not going to hurt them. It's not going to hurt the butterflies, the bees, the hummingbirds, anything like that if you're completely organic. Um, this person mixes up a half a cup of salt and one cup of flour and shakes it on the cabbages while dew is still on the leaves. So why would you want to do this when the dew is on the leaves? That way it'll stick. If I put flour on my plants right now, especially in this wind, it's, it's gone in an hour. You want it to be able to stick a little while. Why are we using flour? And I'll tell you something else we're gonna use. This right here is your next step. We've talked about BT. Completely organic, something I've read, cornmeal. Cornmeal, while the plants are wet, you could do it at night, you could do it in the morning. You usually pest feed in the morning. Sprinkle it all over the plant while it's still wet. Worms eat this and they can't digest it and then they just die. So that is a completely organic way to do this. Now, the only problem with using cornmeal, cornmeal draws ants and slugs into your garden. Don't wanna do that, okay? I don't want that. I would rather have the cabbage worm than mounds of ants everywhere. I don't want fire ants in my garden at all. So, that's, but that's an option if you wanna try that. Um, I'm trying to see what else. Wood ash has been used. Anything natural, guys, it just doesn't hurt. Okay, it just does not hurt. Um, the gold standard would be floating row covers. People use that, I don't, okay? I've only grown cabbage once before this and it was horrendous. This year they're looking beautiful. So I've just never invested in that. I really don't want to. I think we've got it nailed here, nailed down, if we can just keep on doing what we're doing. Now, I believe that's all that I had out of the book. That's what the book said. The thing is chock full of information. If you wanna get this book again, Organic Plant Protection. Very, very good. If you follow along with us, we've got new people every day, guys. We're jumping leaps and bounds. Thank you all. If you're watching us, I'll, I'll talk out of the book every now and then. I'll go back and refer to other videos. That way you can kind of catch up. Um, last but not least, as far as organic, this right here. I used this on my bush beans last year, neem oil. Neem oil is more of a preventative though, okay? neem to prevent 
BT is going to take it out. Looper and cabbage worm. And then cornmeal, I know it works for cabbage worm. I don't know about loopers. I think it would, but remember, it may draw ants. So and heavy watering, heavy watering may cause rot. Uh, there's all sorts of diseases cabbage, cabbages can get. The main thing is, right now, during this time, I don't want these leaves eaten up because they're trying to form heads. They're needing all the nutrients they can get. This is when you need to be fertilizing heavy because they need nutrients to make the, the fruit, the head of the cabbage. You don't want to lose any part of your plant. If you see some on there, pick them off, okay? Pick those things off and get rid of them. People use sticky traps. I, I just don't have that big of a problem. I've got one right here beside me that's perfectly fine. So just for the couple we've got, probably gonna use BT. That's organic. Now let's talk about inorganic farming. Most of y'all will go to the store and you can get this right here, liquid seven dust. It'll kill them on contact if you want to do that type of gardening. That it works for cabbage worms, cabbage loopers, bugs in general. So you've got several things here that you could try if you like seven dust or if you like BT and neem oil. It's up to you, okay? I don't blame anybody for doing any type of gardening. As long as you're getting out here, you know, hey, I'm proud of you. So that's what we've got. Um, not knock on wood. If I had wood, I'd knock on it. Not one problem with broccoli or cauliflower. Not one. Everywhere I've read, you can see my gardens behind me. I have English peas, I've got lettuce, beets, onions, now tomatoes as of two days ago, cabbage, beets, lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower behind me, over here, kale, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, English peas. Um, the internet says don't plant this stuff together because the pest pressure is gonna be that much higher. We've not had one bit of trouble, okay? Not off the cauliflower, not off the broccoli. Barely off the cabbage. Again, red cabbage is not going to mature like green cabbage. Not that quick either. Anything black, purple, deep red, if you've got compared to green, is not going to do the same in my book as a regular variety. It's just something about it. Um, so that's what we've got. And that's two options you can use, organic and inorganic, but I beg of you, I beg of you, if you're in the south, now if you're, if you're south of me, I'm in central Alabama, and you want to start a spring garden next year, you may need to even do it in January. You may need to do it in late December, depending on your climate. Um, we're in zone 7B here. No, I'm sorry, 8A, they changed it this year. We were on the line. Now we're in 8A, so a lot of people are warmer than us. There's people in south Alabama right now that's got yellow squash coming in. So it's, it's been warm and usually every February here, it warms up and you know, get out here and plant. Don't let your garden just sit if you can, if you're amending while you're doing it. And the good thing is guys, the good thing about this gardening, you'll notice mine's a little bit trashed up. I've got radishes everywhere. They've split. I didn't want them. I didn't want to use the greens. Take a little bit of your harvest, throw it back into your garden. It'll sit there and decompose, 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 okay? I did notice in the organic uh, book that it also says tilling the soil. These bugs overwinter, worms, loopers, loppers, <laughs> loopers, all this stuff, larva, overwinters in the soil, meaning it'll come back in the spring, that way it'll be ready by fall, to attack all your plants. If you till it, it usually kills it. Till it several times is what they say. There's huge controversy on that. We till our garden over here, we don't that one, we don't have to, um, but tilling, if you think it destroys the flora in the ground, it may, but it does have benefits as well. So you're gonna have to make that personal choice whether you want to till your garden or not. We have no choice right here. Um, if I could go back and change it years ago, I'd do it just like that one. Fill it full of compost and let it be. So anyways, guys, we're getting ready to do some kraut. We're getting ready to <laughs> get some cabbage going and fertilize, fertilize, fertilize. Use some old chicken manure works beautiful. All right, guys, we'll see you next time on Harmon Homestead.